Hi team, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all really well. This video is going to be a show and tell of all my November makes. The initial aim for November was to try and get through as many of my make nine that I hadn't quite got around to doing done so that at the end of the year I would have ticked off most if not all of the things on the list. And I started off with the right idea in terms of uh, the first thing I was going to make was going to be something out of jersey and then the jersey fabric could have been used to make a body and it was my intention to make a full set of what it is and I'm going to show you what it is. I've got a top and a skirt out of it and I was going to make a body and a pair of leggings to tick off the body and also the jersey fabric from last year. And then the next thing I was gonna do is I was gonna work on making a motif t-shirt because that's one of the things that's on my list. And like I said, I've got these rolls of jersey going on. But then as with most things, I then got inspired to make something else. And so ended up not really sticking to the plan of getting through things on my Make 9, which I'm not too upset about. Um, after I sat and thought about it for a while, I was just a bit like, there's no there's no law that says that I have to do everything on my Make 9. And when you look at it, I probably have done the majority of things. And it's just got around to, there's some things on there that I just, it's not that I don't want to make them ever. It's just right now, I'm not really inspired to make them. And there's other things in my mind that I would rather make. So I just think to myself, why well, restrict myself to making a couple of things on the list when I don't really have to? and I can just move on and make something that I actually really, really want to make. Which then brings me back around to the makes that I did complete in November. First thing I'm going to show you, there's not going to be an extra image of it on the body or anything because it's actually turned out not quite as well as I probably would have intended. I mean, it, I would be lying if I said that I was, plan I was intending to make this item to the best of my ability because I was just trying to test out the pattern anyway. So the pattern that I used was this McCall's pattern, which is 7753. I bought this pattern because there was a girl um, in my office who came into work one day in the summer with a blouse very similar to View D. As soon as I saw it, I asked where she was. I think she either got it from Topshop or Zara, one of the really obvious high street names. And I just thought it was really nice. She had it in a white blouse. And yeah, it was just really, really nice. I didn't I didn't really want to go out and buy it because then you're wearing the exact same thing as someone in your office, which is not my favorite thing to do. Um, so when I found this recalls pattern, I was like, oh, perfect. I will definitely try and make it because it's very, honestly, it's basically the same. It's basically the same blouse, but obviously with a few styling tweaks. So I made it in some leftover khaki crepe fabric that I have. And this is it. <laughs> um, and like I said, it's very, very badly made. I think, first of all, I think the fabric is probably the wrong fabric to make. It's like super lightweight. Um, then the interfacing that I've used is then too heavy for the fabric <laughs> and the thing I get through the most is the bust darts are not even level so to be honest with you I don't really know where my head was at when I was making this but it's completely wrong I will I will wear it because I don't want to just produce more waste uh, in life so I will definitely wear it, but there's not going to be any inserts because also today when I was looking at it, I realised there were like random like grease marks and stuff, obviously where I'd been sewing and not being very careful as to where I was putting down my fabric and blah, 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 blah. It just goes on and on. So a couple of things with this pattern, which I only looking at the back of it now, I realised that it says advance at the back, which I think would probably be quite a fair thing to say because the pattern instructions can really throw you off. Like they threw me off a couple of times because I think in terms of the actual making of the garment, it's not necessarily advanced. I think it covers off quite a lot of the things that you would potentially learn to do. I mean, it's not a straight out the bat, learn to sew first pattern pattern, but it's definitely something that if you've been sewing for maybe like six months to a year and you've done a variety of things and you've not just necessarily just done one thing and you've done blouses or dresses or blazers before then you could definitely probably tackle this no problem but it's just the instructions that kind of throw you because there are four different styles in this pattern 
but they all essentially are the same in terms of the bodice they're all a one shoulder something and then the difference is is that whether or not you have a flounce or a strap or two sleeves one sleeves double flounces however um, the different different styling bits are is then where the instructions are different uh, but it's not always completely clear where one view ends and the view begins or at least for me it wasn't and I had to sit and read and then reread the instructions again just to make sure I was following along the right way but aside from the instructions it is a very easy top to make and I think I'm going to make it again the trouble that I have is that it's very difficult for me to get in and out of it and I have put a zip in the side as per the instructions and I understand why the zip is in the side for the instructions because you've got to find a way to get in and out of it but I'm going to need to find a way to re-adjust, readjust? To adjust the pattern so that it's easier for me to get in and out of because it fits throughout my body no problem but just in terms of getting it on and off it's quite difficult and whether that means I need to put in the zip in slightly higher or I don't know maybe put some sort of elastic in the top I'm not too sure I'm gonna to have to sit and think about it because it is a very nice pattern and I definitely want to use it again and do pattern hacks and all that lovely stuff but I just need to find out a way to actually get it to fit first properly around my shoulders and my bicep and so I can actually get it out I think it's probably just because my shoulders when I you know they probably get a bit broad uh, and yeah so I just got to find a way to do that but still keep it fitting through the body. The second top that I made in November was a simplicity pattern of 8137 which I think I showed you my progress of this pattern when I did my pattern haul in my last video. I'll leave the link at the top somewhere and I think like I said in that video I really enjoyed making this pattern and I made it in um, some like poly satin type fabric that I got from uh, work that is the same print in two different scales and I just absolutely love it. And then a little peplum. The inside is the lining, which is the same print, but it's the larger scale print, and it's just a small scale print that's on the front. Um, and like I said in my previous video, that top was inspired by the whole mixed print trend that's been on the high street this past season, and it's probably going to stick around for a little while longer. Where I've seen so many different tops mixed with like polka dot and leopard print and just florals and something else, and I've just really, really loved it. So I definitely have lots of fabric <laughs> that I can make sort of different blouses with that in so um, that's going to be one of the things I think I'm going to do probably into the new year because I already have a full list of makes to make for December already. Now the next blouse that I didn't necessarily make in November but I finished in November was this blouse here using a Vogue pattern. <laughs> which is something that I have used before and I have shown you guys before I think the last time I used it I made a white blouse um, maybe earlier this year and I just really wanted to do it again because I the last blouse I made was I think it might have been one of the spring or summer makes that I did which was a lilac print with like white polka dots on it and I said I really struggled with the buttonholes because it was all gaping and they weren't aligned blah 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 and then lots of you really really great people suggested that I get a uh, a gauge to measure out my buttonholes so that they would be more symmetrical and I could position them where I needed to and also to start at the widest part which is your bust line so I did all those things I got my little gauge so I started at the bust line and it fits fantastically so thank you all so much for your tips and advice because I now definitely feel like a champion of buttonholes I mean they still take ages to make and hand sewing on the buttons is not the funnest job in the world but at least I know that they will definitely be aligned and they won't you know I won't have to worry about the gaping stuff and it's not like I've spent hours and hours making the blouse and sewing on the buttons just to put it on and it's like ugh, gape <laughs> 
So yes, I am very, very thankful for this. The next thing I have to show you is the jersey set I was talking to you about at the top of the video, when I was saying I was, my plan was to make a matching set of leggings slash skinny stretch trousers, a pencil skirt, a crop top and a body. It was gonna be my whole Kardashian inspired wear thing. Uh, because they're just everywhere and as much as every so often I'm a bit like oh my gosh get out of my life they do have a massive influence on fashion so I was like maybe you know it's like one of those things that you do you see people around let me remake it blah 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 but I didn't get all the way far as making the body and trousers I just made a little sports crop top and a pencil skirt pattern 6493 which is a pattern I think I showed you in my October sew and tell uh, where I made the blue check dress and I basically used a bodice of this um, dress and jumpsuit and then amended the skirt to be different but this time I used the entire crop top in this pack and then I used the pencil skirt from this um, pattern set by Vogue which is V8938 I found the pencil skirt harder to do than the crop top and that is mostly because of coming down to the measurements. So my hips were one size pattern and my waist was another size pattern and I don't, well it's not even that I don't think, I didn't is the answer. I didn't measure and amend the pattern properly so then it wasn't until after I had sort of basted it together to see what it looked like that I then had to keep amending and amending and amending because it's stretched so you can make it smaller than your measurements because it's going to stretch and then fit and just stay in place and so getting the shaping from the waist to my hips and everything was a bit of a struggle and it's still not quite there and I don't think I've actually sewn in the elastic in the waistband how it's meant to because it actually flaps around and I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to do that but aside from all of that, I think it's turned out quite well. I mean, I'm definitely going to try it again because I do like stretch pencil skirts. I just like the way that they look. It's just a very finished, like all in together, shapely type uh, garment. So I do really, I do really like that. So I'm just going to try again, I think. And then I'm just going to have to cut this pattern um, and amend it if it means narrowing the waist and doing all the different changes and stuff. I just have to do that because then at least I know I've definitely got this and I can just keep making the skirts because it was such a quick and easy make. The only thing, like I said, that threw me is the elastic uh, band, waistband, because it's not a, you know, attach a waistband, thread it through, tie it at one end. You actually have to sew it on first to the edge of your fabric, and then you basically fold it down and it sits inside like that so you don't have a band, it's just an elasticated waist that's hidden. And even me holding this up, looking at it from this side, it actually, to me, it still actually looks a bit too wide. But it's fine. It's, a, it's good enough for a first try. I know where the errors are. I can only improve, you know? The only way from here is up. And we're on to the last two bits that I made in uh, November. I was about to say December then. The last two bits that I've made in November. And the first one I'm going to show you is this lovely dress hanging up behind me and it's a Butterix pattern which is a B45, no, B654, no, <laughs> B6456. Wow, I don't know why it was so hard for me to uh, get that out. arms of view D. Is that correct, Andrea? Is that what we think we did? Or maybe I just did view D. Okay, so I can't remember what view I did, but it was either C or D. It doesn't really matter because the body is basically the same. 
and then the arms. But I lengthened it because it's obviously a top and I lengthened it to make it into a dress. And I really like it. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I think it's definitely gonna be something that I can wear now when it's cold. I can wear it as, as a dress over jeans and I can wear it in the summertime just as a dress by itself. So yeah, I think it's gonna take me a while. And the fabric is a viscose fabric and I always have trouble sewing with viscose because me cutting it out, I end up moving it around. I never get the needles in properly. So I'm really happy with how it turned out because overall of all the things that I've made in viscose, it's probably the one that has kept its shape the best because I've not cut it out really skewy and then made it difficult for me to sew it together. And the final thing that I have to show you for my November makes, sew and tell, is this pattern from McCall's which is 7789, which I made in bright green. Whee! Um, I had this fabric, it's like a cotton fabric, I'm just going to hold it up here because I just need everybody to take in how green this green is. I'll put it down now. Um, yeah, so I've made it in bright green, it's a cotton fabric that I have had for ages and yes it's super bright but when it gets hot and sweaty and horrible in the summer here in England next year I will be Happy as Larry in my cotton jumpsuit, which I made into a collot length, which you can't see regardless of how how high I hold it up right now. And I really enjoyed making this pattern a lot it was a it was a lot of fun this is one of the McCall's patterns that is the you know design it yourself type one where you just basically have different tops and you can even put it with um full leg palazzo pants style jumpsuit um jumpsuit trousers or you can put it with like a long maxi skirt and then you, if you put it with the trousers you have a midriff piece if you put it with a skirt then you don't have a midriff mid piece um but yes i very much enjoyed it and my reason for making this is because I have some fabric that I got from work, which is navy and red. Um, it's not like thin pinstripes, but it's basically a pinstripe style with like thicker stripes. And I really wanted to make it into a jumpsuit. Found this pattern from McCall's over the summer and I wanted to try it out. My intention was to make the jumpsuit earlier than I did, um, but you know, time, doesn't always play on your side, etc, etc. The amendments that I had to make, so I cut this all out on a size 14 to fit with all of my other body measurements. But what I actually need to do is take the, I need to take the cuts in a little bit at the darts here because this bit was a bit too uh, wide and gapy and didn't sit properly. So I did that on both sides, but I did that after I had made it. So I had made the whole garment, put it on, and I was like just pinning this in on myself to know where that needs to go. And the rest of it is all, it's all fine. It's all as per the size um, 14. Oh no, I'm lying. It's not all as per. So then following on from the shorts that I made last month with the McCord pattern, which was also cut out on a size 14, I adjusted the crutch area. So I spoke to some ladies that I work with and asked them just for some advice on how best to fit the um, shorts and they suggested to extend the like crutch line um, just a little bit so it's a little bit longer and then to maybe make the front um, the front seam like not super super straight so you have a bit more room for you know like your actual body to go because not everybody's body, not everybody's stomach is like dead straight. It might like be on a slight slant and stuff like that. So that's what I did. I extended the crutch, I think on the front and the back by about a centimeter and a half. So it was basically just giving me more um, in a seam allowance, just giving me the seam allowance back to then add on more seam allowance. And I don't think I adjusted the front of it in the end because I thought that actually giving me a bit more room through the crutch area a bit better and I think I also lowered the crutch as well just again ever so slightly just to give me a bit more room back and then it fits lovely um, and I'm really pleased about it so now I know what to do to make my pinstripe one because I've then I just wanted to focus on when I was doing a pinstripe where I'm getting the stripes to align how I want them to and in terms of the 
bodice top it gives me a good bodice top to use for my little red dress that I am still working on had a couple of different idea changes and stuff in my mind obviously it changes my mind all the time but I think I'm pretty much set on what I want it to be and it's gonna be fab and it's gonna be a dress it is gonna be a dress not a jumpsuit so yes look out for that one coming to a so and tell reveal real near you soon <laughs> thank you so much for your suggestions on how i can improve my buttonhole making because i am super 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 happy with how this blouse has turned out and now i have that gauge i'm just going to be flying with buttonholes i just i can just feel it and i think definitely Vertical, vertical buttonholes are better for me right now in this period of time that we're talking about. I mean, I might change my mind in a little while. Um, so I'm going to continue with the vertical ones and then maybe gradually introduce horizontal ones as soon as I can figure out how best to place them so I don't get the gaping issue again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please continue to like, share and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Yeah.